This book was so f***ed up. Happy Friday! Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and this is the F'd Up book tag. This tag was created by Guilty Feet. It is all about the books that are just plain F'd Up. And that is the last time I'm going to call it the F'd Up book tag because I will forget to censor myself from this point onwards. So question one, what is a book that was fucked up in a good way? And I've got here The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. This book was so fucked up, I cannot even tell you. I'm completely obsessed with the cover of this book, like the beautiful peeling wallpaper, revealing a dark secret underneath, that's what's going on here. So it's been a while since I read it, but it's about a teenage girl who ends up going back to her mother's family. Her mother had recently died, I think from suicide if I'm remembering correctly. I may have got that wrong. Uh, but for whatever reason, our 15 year old main character ends up back at her grandparents' home, uh, where her cousin also lives, and it's the Roanoke family. They are this famous family in the small town where they're from. They have this whole family full of beautiful girls who are all really troubled and all really messed up, and it's because the family has this big, dark secret. And it is horrible. <laughs> it is disgusting. It is fucked up. It is not for everyone. It says something I think very dark about my soul that I really enjoyed this book. Oh, I just looked at the description to remember like the structure of the book. So when she was 15, she spent a summer at her grandparents' house and that's when she found out like the secret of what it means to be a Roanoke girl and she ran away. And then we are also set 11 years later because one of her cousins has gone missing. And so our main character has no choice but to like go back and try and find out what happened. And it says, is she strong enough to escape a second time? So that's like the structure of this book. And yeah, I mean, it's just fucked up. I'm not going to say here in this video what specific trigger warnings there are because they would be spoilers if you do want to go into this book and have the twist reveal itself to you. Um, but if you know that you have certain things that trigger you, then I would advise like searching what the content warnings are for this book because I can imagine <laughs> they would definitely be things that some people would definitely want to avoid, which is fair. Okay, question two is what is a book that was fucked up in a bad way? And I read quite a few. For this question, I'm going to say Maestra by L.S. Hilton, which is a book that I read ages ago. I do not have my copy anymore because it was so bad. I gave it away straight away. Funnily enough, it had a kind of similar cover design with like the slit. I remember actually really liking the cover. So it was a slit down this way and it was like actually split in the paper. It was very cool, but the contents of the book did not live up to that promise. I actually did a whole like, I say a whole reading vlog, it was like two minutes long. The very first videos I used to make on this channel were Snapchat book reviews, so they were literally like a couple of minutes and they were this way around and they were just terrible. But I will link to my review or my vlog of me reading Maestra and you can see how much I was hating that experience. It's about a serial killer, usually a big plus for me, who is a woman, so that's fun, different from usual. Um, and she is an assistant at an auction house, so it's like kind of set in the art world, and she's also obsessed with sex, so she's always having sex with people and killing people, which, you know, sounds like the ingredients for a book that I could really enjoy, but it was so badly done. It was just cringe. It felt like it was every sentence was just like trying to get a reaction out of you rather than doing anything interesting at all. And even down to just like the details of how she talked about social media and stuff, it all felt like very, very try hard. It's actually the first book in a trilogy. Needless to say, I did not read the rest of the books. I did, just to be cruel, make Emma Tobias read this book in one of our love hate challenges. So I'll link to that below. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry about that, Emma. Not a fun experience for anyone. Question three is what is a book that everyone loved but you think is just fucked up? And I'm gonna have to say for this one, The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Ardier. I know a lot of people loved this one. I DNF'd it in the end, I think. Possibly I finished it, but I think I DNF'd it because I just could not get on board with the premise. It is supposedly a feminist retelling of the Thousand and One Nights story, which is similar to, uh, what's the book? A Thousand Nights of Hero or A Hundred Nights of Hero? A Thousand Nights of Hero. There's a graphic novel that is a queer feminist retelling of that story that I absolutely loved. The Wrath and the Dawn didn't do it for me because it didn't get away from the central romance in this book being beginning as an entirely non-consensual 
relationship, even taking aside the fact that he's like gonna kill her, it all just felt way, way too uncomfortable for me. So I couldn't get on board with it because I just felt like the relationship in itself was fucked up. Question number four, what is a book that is sexy AF tap? <laughs> I see what he did there. Um, so for that one, I'm gonna say The Pisces by Melissa Broder, maybe, is her name. Again, I don't have that one anymore. Sorry to my sister if she's watching this. She loved that book and she recommended it to me. And like, I get it. I get why she loved it. It was a very, very interesting and fun book, but I also was like traumatized the whole way through. It's about a supremely fucked up main character who has all sorts of issues and she ends up having a pretty hot affair with a sexy merman. So all of that was fun. There were lots of sexy AF scenes, um, but the whole way through, she was just being such an appalling person. And there was an ill-fated storyline with a dog that was stressing me out so much the whole way through the book that I just could not relax into it. And also even the sexy scenes weren't really doing anything for me because there was still like a grossness to them. Question five, what's a book that is effed up for kids? I remember a book, I don't know exactly what it was called. I think it was called like Peter or something. It's like a German fairy tale. We had a book of it as a kid and my cousins had the same book. So we'd see it at their house as well. And it's about a kid who gets his thumbs cut off as a punishment, I think for biting his nails. And that is effed up. For children, that really freaked me out. That's stayed in my head for this many years. Uh, hello. No, I found it. It was called Little Sucker Thumb. What? In general, a lot of kids' books, I feel like, are very fucked up. Like, the Grimm's fairy tales. Kids just seem to be very okay with a level of gore and revenge and punishment and darkness that like as adults we become too old for it's not that they're too young for it we become too old for it and we're like not okay with it anymore question number six what is an effed up classic um so again a lot of them a lot of classic books are very fucked up one that i remember reading at uni we had to study at uni was called pamela and it's about like a guy who kidnaps this girl and just keeps her prisoner and she slowly falls in love with him. I think that's what happens. I remember the professor who we were having the seminars with comparing the book to Fifty Shades of Grey and it was like a very accurate comparison but written in like, I don't know, let's find out, written in 1740. Uh, it's just supremely fucked up romance story and I think we're supposed to root for the girl because she like holds out, holds onto her virtue despite like constant attempts at sexual assault from her kidnapper and then she is rewarded for that because she gets to marry him? Like how is that a prize? Anyone who knows this book better than I do probably just saw me sum that up entirely wrong. I don't remember. I just remember thinking it was effed up. Question seven, name a book that is effed up in translation. So for that one, I'm gonna say The Enchanter by What's his name? Vladimir Nabokov? Is he the guy who wrote Lolita? If it is, then him. So before he wrote Lolita, which he wrote in English, he wrote a shorter book in Russian that I read in translation um, called The Enchanter that is basically Lolita. It's almost like our first draft of Lolita, but way more fucked up. And Lolita is already fucked up. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Lolita, but I get it. I get that it is there is humor in there, there is some nuance in there. Like people bloody love Lolita, I'm not one of them, but I, I get it. Whereas The Enchanter is like Lolita without any of the tongue in cheekness. It's just like flat out the creepiness. Question eight, what is some effed up nonfiction? Um, what's the most effed up nonfiction book I've read? Like. I've read some books that are about pretty fucked up topics, but the books themselves were very good. A book that the whole way through I was just like, what the fuck, um, would be Not That Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham. That's her autobiography or her memoirs. Um, I didn't like completely 100% hate the book, but I hated a lot of it. I actually had little post-its. I always never annotate my books, but I put little post-its through the book when I was reading it. And I had like pink ones when she made a point that I thought was really good and red ones or blue ones, I don't remember what color, different color ones when she said something that I thought was completely fucked up. And it was like half and half. The book was absolutely 
filled with these post-it notes and I wish I still had it just to look at the post-its but I gave it away because I was like I'm not going to reread this um, and it's actually the book that is the reason that I made friends with Emma Tobias in the first place because she had done a video review I was like very very new to booktube and she'd done a video review of it and I watched it and I was like oh my god girl sing uh, so thank you to Lena Dunham for that but not thank you for a lot of the contents of that book. Lena Dunham is a strange character, a very very strange character. She made some interesting feminist points in the book but nothing that I haven't like since read expressed better somewhere else um, and just a lot of like very deliberately provocative shit that didn't paint her in a good light and didn't really do very much to explore feminism beyond her own very white privileged experience of being a woman and you know that like that's fine for her to tell her own story but she has a way of making like sweeping statements of trying to take her experience and apply it to mean something broader to the whole of womanhood which I think is why people find her so irritating and why like I know it was really unfortunate for her that she had a character in Girls who said, I believe I'm the voice of my generation, and everyone kind of took that as Lena Dunham saying that, even though it wasn't. Like, she wrote that line as a joke for a character. Um, so it was kind of unfair that people were like, she thinks she's a voice for a generation, but she doesn't help herself because she talks as if she thinks she's the voice of a generation. Or at least she used to. She's gone a little quiet lately. I hope she's okay. Question nine, what is an illustrated F that book? So I've got here this book, When I Arrived at the Castle by Emily Carroll. You can see a vlog of me reading this one during my Halloween reading vlog, so I'll link to that. Um, it's absolutely terrifying. Everything in here is like black and white and red and like, there we go, gruesome. Like not so gruesome that I couldn't handle it. I am very, very squeamish, so it's not like gore. It's just unsettling images. Everything looks just not quite what you expect and the colour scheme just really adds to that like absolute terror. I really enjoyed this book. I actually read it twice, like literally back to back to see if I could make more sense of it the second time around and I couldn't uh, because it's just completely effed up. But it's fun. My battery is flashing so that is a hint for me to hurry up and get to question number 10, the final one. Hanya Yanagihara's A Little Left Up, a book that is just misery porn solely designed to convince you how effed up the world is. So that's the criticism a lot of people make about A Little Life. I actually didn't feel that about A Little Life. It's very, very sad as a book, but I also thought it was a very beautiful book. I've said this before. I am a big, big fan of that book. I don't think that it's misery porn. A book that I would describe as misery porn is Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis. That I think is my least favorite book that I've ever read. I had to study it for university and I get what it's doing, I know what it is, the point that it's trying to get across and it achieves that by being horrific. It's just about a group of characters who are terrible and have no feelings and no hope and they just progress to do worse and worse things in each scene and I had to read this like over and over again because I was studying it and like writing an essay on it. I had to keep reading it and it was making me feel physically sick. I hate that book. It is absolutely, in my mind, the definition of misery porn. But I'm going to wrap up now because that battery is just flashing faster and faster. So do leave me a comment letting me know the books that you thought were completely effed up in a good way or a bad way. Because if it's a good way, I probably want to read them. And I will see you next time. Goodbye! <laughs>